uh, unfortunately, many times they would not improve the software until we actually went public with the findings. Uh, companies do indeed want to ignore problems as long as possible. Uh, it's cheaper for them. Um, recently, I conducted training courses at NASA's Jet Propulsion Labs to try and raise their level of awareness uh, as to the vulnerabilities, uh, especially with uh, the name brand recognition. Uh, in the very near future, I'll be conducting uh, training courses over at the NSA. Shortly after that, the Loft will be releasing a white paper on new cryptographic weaknesses that I, along with one of the top United States cryptographers, uh, have found in a very prominent commercial operating system, which will remain nameless. If you're, uh, if you're looking for computer security, then the Internet is not the place to be. Uh, if you think that you're an exception to the norm and that you have a secure setup that communicates over the Internet, uh, you're probably mistaken. Um, Furthermore, if you feel that the government is giving you access to the enabling technology you need to combat this problem, you're wrong yet again. Uh, the foundation of the Internet is over 20 years old at this point. While the technology still works, it's being asked to perform tasks that it was never intended to, uh, via secure fashions nonetheless. Uh, how can one be pr expected to protect a system on a network where any of the seven individuals seated before you can tear down the foundation that the network was built upon, let alone the systems that are sitting on top of it? So even if computers, systems, and other peripherals on the network were secure, the problem is still moot. Can the systems be secured? Well, in many cases, they actually can be. Uh, for instance, the problem with the phantom air traffic controllers could be remedied by incorporating relatively trivial and inexpensive cryptographically secure authentication. The same would hold true for MDC 4800, which is the protocol most commonly used by mobile police data terminals to remotely pull and update records. Personal paging protocols, uh, everybody has a little personal pager nowadays, uh, such as Poxag, Flex, and Golay, which the White House Communications Agency uses to coordinate movements of the president, would also benefit from this relatively trivial modification. Why don't strong authentication properties exist in these protocols? Most likely the same reason that simple security mechanisms are missing from all of the software, or almost all of the software, sold to cor corporations and agencies today. It's cheaper and it's easier for companies to sell insecure software. There's no liability attached to the manufacturers, and there's no policing done to stop companies from selling insecure software under the guise of secure. In an industry, industry where time to market matters, who wants or cares to add security or even thoroughly test their product? Well, you should. You, the government and consumer, should care and want software products to include security and authentication mechanisms, and I think you do. You should encourage the companies to include this in their products and hold them liable when their products fail. Uh, there are parts of the situ situation that the government can directly help. Lifting the constraints on cryptographic export would encourage companies to more readily include authentication and encryption in their products. The Cellular Telecommunications Protection Act is an example of legislation that is in place right now that hinders consumer watch groups such as ourselves, um, thus perpetuating the insecurity status quo that's out there. Uh, in conclusion, hopefully you're having us here is not a fluke, and hopefully we've not offended in any way, uh, but this might be the beginning of an ongoing dialogue uh, between the government and hacker groups such as ourselves. Uh, perhaps the information from such meetings will end up becoming an enabling mechanism for future change that will help organizations of all sizes, not just large government organizations. Uh, we encourage you to read the written testimony, uh, and we are more than happy to answer any questions in as much detail uh, or technical detail or non-technical detail uh, as you see fit uh, and expound or clarify upon any concerns. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And um, you have not offended any of us, and, and um, just the contrary, I think it's, it's probably uh, appropriate that gentlemen such as yourself are the ones who, who come forward and demonstrate that the emperor has no clothes. Uh, so we appreciate your coming here, especially in light of the fact that the Washington Post described you as rock stars of the computer hacking elite. Uh, so uh, we appreciate uh, your being with us here today. Um, I'm informed that you uh, think that it, within 30 minutes the seven of you could uh, make the internet unusable for the entire nation. Is that correct? That's correct. Actually, one of us with just a few packets. Um, I. We've, we've told a few agencies about this. Uh, it's kind of funny because we think that this is something that the various government agencies should be actively going after. We know the Department of Defense just did a very large uh, uh, 
investigation into what's known as denial of service attacks against the infrastructure. Uh, in our various day jobs, we contributed a large portion of the information to that uh, actual um, investigation. Uh, much to our chagrin, the learnings from it were instantly classified, uh, which we were giving them largely public information. Uh, it, it is very trivial with the old protocols to segregate and separate the different major long-haul providers, uh, which would then be the national access points, the metropolitan area ether uh, sections. AT&T can't talk to MCI, can't talk to PSINet, can't talk to Alternet, et cetera, et cetera, and keep it down that way as long as we really wanted to. It would definitely take a few days for people to figure out what was going on. You, uh, you state that uh that uh, with regard to, to commerce over the Internet, which is uh, rapidly growing, as we all know, that uh, the Internet was not designed for it. Well, what do you mean by that? Uh, the Internet was designed out of the uh, Defense Department's Advanced Research Project Agency to simply have computers talk to each other. Uh, this was a very laudable act and a laudable goal, and I think they succeeded fantastically. Uh, this was largely an academic environment, uh, with some government research organizations. It grew up, it flourished, it, it struck everybody by surprise, and now big business is saying, well, let's, let's, um, let's jump on board and uh, make some money off of this. Well, you know, this, this is kind of like if you've driven in Boston, you know, the streets aren't tremendously designed in a wonderful fashion because they followed the cows around and laid the pavement down. I mean, you can get it to work, but it can be really painful, and that's the stage we're in right now. You say that you've been working with uh, some of our gov governmental agencies with regard to, to some of these problems. And, uh, of course, with commercial uh, entities. You know, it occurs to me in listening to you and, and listening to our prior witness that um, there doesn't seem to be an inducement for industry to do much about this at this stage of the game. That's what you're saying, essentially, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I hope that, uh, that there are some, some more forward-looking people in some of these industries than we've had in times past. You can look at uh, the automobile industry or the uh, tobacco industry or any number of industries uh, have kept their heads in the sand or t chief executives about problems on the horizon. And uh, this is going to be something, as much as we dislike lawsuits, and there's too many of them, uh, in this country. This is clearly going to be something that is going to hit somebody big time one of these days before very long. And, and uh, hopefully it won't, uh, it won't take an a, a economic um, disaster, you know, to cause all that. But you can see it on the horizon, can't you? I mean, they're going to have to come to terms with the fact that their ability to do something about this is out there, uh, and they're turning their back on a, on a way to... Uh, uh, to make their systems more secure. They're not doing it. And they're going to be uh, clearly having to answer for that. You say that, that the Internet and com computer security is almost non-existent. Could you elaborate on that a bit? What, what do you... You mean literally? Um, there, are, there are many aspects that make that up. Uh, the operating systems, as we just heard testimony from Dr. Neumann, uh, very correctly, uh, aren't incorporating any sort of real security mechanisms. There is a lack of education, and there is a lack of understanding as to what the problems are out there. Uh, there, is, there are no mechanisms for uh, places to keep, their, uh, keep abreast of current findings. I mean, the security realm and the network security uh, in particular is very rapidly changing. Uh, so it's kind of difficult. It's not like, what was the analogy with the, the cars? Somebody give a, the recall? They send you a, a letter if, if your Ford Explorer is going to have a very serious problem. Um, the number of operating systems out there, uh, they aren't sending people the letters. They're saying, you have to do your own due diligence and come to us and find out what we've made publicly available or what we've decided to uh, alert you to. At the same time, um, keep in mind that uh, if we don't alert you to it, uh, we save a lot of money and we save our top engineers' times by not having to throw them at the products where they can add new bells and whistles into whatever. Uh, Let me just add something to that. Yeah, please. Yeah. Mark, the, the analogy was that the uh, Volkswagen Beetle that just got recalled, evidently they found three cars that had a problem, three. 
um, and they didn't cause any serious deaths or injuries, but they just found three potential problems in the vehicle. They sent out 8,500 letters to every purchaser of the vehicle in the United States. Um, if, there, if there's a software company that has three hack attempts against it, or three successful hack attempts against it, uh, a particular piece of software or an operating system, they're not going to go call every single one of their people that just spent you know, a lot of money buying their software, telling them, hey, there's a problem, we need to call back our software so we can fix it. That, right now, that doesn't happen. Um, some of the problems that are found are reported to the manufacturers, and they don't even make a fix publicly available. They work on a fix internally, and if you have the same problem and you come to them and you say, you know, I'm getting broken into, someone's attacking my system in this way, they'll say, okay, well, we have this behind the scenes fix that you can apply to your system, but we haven't even made it publicly available yet. And until the problem mushrooms up and enough people complain about it, then they'll come out with a public fix. But if it's behind the scenes, people just contacting the manufacturer, we've seen that they don't really come public and uh, even tell the other users of their system that this problem exists and here's the fix for it. Uh, this, I have one thing real quickly before. This is one of the main problems with the computer emergency response team. Right. Uh, there's also a lot of finger pointing in the industry where the systems administrators claim that the uh, software provided them isn't shipped in a secure manner. The uh, industry says that they're, they shouldn't be responsible for that. And I'm not quite sure because I'm not a lawyer or even in nearly skilled in political matters, but I don't know if there's any legislation that could, could fix the uh, liability problem. I don't know, but I know that is one of the issues.